Don't screw it for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
I took the supermarket flowers from the windowsill I threw the day old tea from the cup Packed up the photo album Matthew had made Memories of a life that's been loved Took the Garrett Wilson cars and stuffed animals Put the old ginger beer
If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold When your day's down here or through There's a place up there for people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for a love so someone could be saved a place for people like you. I've heard up there the streets are made of gold. And when you get there, there's a hand to hold. I believe when your day's down here or through, there's a place up there.
Wanted you for life, you and me in the wind. I never thought there'd come a time that our story would end. It's hard to understand. But I guess I'll have to try. It's not easy to say goodbye. For all the joy we shared, all that time we had to spend. If I had one wish, I'd want forever back again to look into your eyes and hold you when you cry. It's not easy to say goodbye. I remember all those great times we had. So many memories, some good, some bad. Yes, and through it all, those memories will last forever. There's peace in where you are. Maybe all I need to know, and if I listen to my heart, I'll hear your laughter once more. And so I have to say, I'm just glad you came my way. It's not easy to say goodbye.
life could only bring again The days I took for granted when To hear your voice was just a call away What I'd give for just some time To say the things that slipped my mind There's so much now I'd really like to say But I can never go back when We did the things we did back then I'll store those precious memories in my mind I'll take what you've instilled in me I'll try to be all I can be And walk the path that you have left behind I sure miss you Life will never be the same With you not here Each passing day has brought much pain God's grace, my strength remains I sure miss you But heaven's sweeter with you there The little things that seemed so small But now like gold in a memory vault I cherish every one I have of you Now I can see and recognize The part you played to shape my life Often see you in the things I do In God's design in my saw the hurting hearts of men as we would say goodbye to those so dear so when our family and friends will be together once again we'll view heaven's splendor hand in hand
thank you, Jesus. Oh, cause every sickness oh, that is sent to destroy your health. Oh, in the name of Jesus, is canceled. We need to ask the church to stand at this time. We need to ask each individual just to stand as you are able to as we begin this service. first earth were passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will be with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them, and God will wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Good afternoon, everyone. We are gathered here this afternoon for a rather sad occasion. The Thanksgiving service of our dear, dear friend, Father Bernard. We know that it is a difficult time, but we have been praying for the family and for the supporters. We want to let you know that God is near. Amen? Yes. Amen. My name is Pastor Dermar Watson, pastor of the Litchfield District of Churches, and today we, as we go through this service, be assured that the God of heaven will take you through, and there's going to be victory at last. Amen. 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 We are going to be doing our own in him on our program refers to him. Far away in the depths of my spirits tonight, rose a melody sweeter than some.
bow your head with me and pause for a moment and talk to the Lord in your own way. Oh God, our Father, our Maker and our King. Well, this afternoon, Lord, we are here. We don't ask to tell you that we are here on a sad occasion. Christ, you know it all. We are here this afternoon to put away our Father, our Grandfather, our Church Brother, and in your name it, Brother Bernard, Brother Stanley, Daylight. But oh God, who am I even this moment to bring the bereaved family to you? Cleanse me now, Lord. And I utter these words in prayer. Self, O oh God, may not be seen. But you, Christ, hell lifted up. Cover the bereaved family. Cover everyone under this church here today. Some are from near, some are from far. So God, we ask for journey mercy. Oh God, in a few moments from this, when Pastor Watson had done the homely, my grandfather, your father, will be in that dark spark, in that cold and clammy clay. There is no light there, no family member to bring him food and water. But I know on that cold and clammy clay, there's a light of our brother Bernard. Oh, Lord, God. Family member were not. But I ask you to stay focused. And if you are not yet accept Christ, do so now. Because one day, Brother Hard, we under that dark, cold and clammy clay. Uh, that calls the pulver in darkness. But if Brother Howard had done it right, a light perfect shall we shine upon him. So I pray thee today, Almighty God, keep us all safe. Christ, if this is the last prayer to pray today, help us all here to have a home in your eternal kingdom as we only say thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. We have in this first lesson, followed by a musical selection. The first lesson will be read by Amaya and Nicalia Bernard, granddaughters, Ecclesiastes 4, 1 through to 8, and Psalm 90, verse number 7 through to 12. Followed by a musical selection, Mrs. Kerry and Gay Lawrence. Away. 
a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time to war and a time of peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'll now be handing over to Nikayla who will be reading the second scripture. Amen. Good afternoon again, church. Our second scripture reading will be taken from Psalms 90, verses 7 to 12. And it reads, For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast cast our iniquity before thee, our secret sins in, thy, in the light of thy countenance, for all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told, the days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Praise the Lord, Church. It is indeed good for us to be here while we are here. On a sad occasion, we know that it is a part of life that we all have to take. Not true? Yes, yes man. And so all we have to do is just encourage the family, just press on in Jesus' name and ensure that when he comes, you too are found faithful to stand.
I can recall when we were about to have crusade in August, and I launched that and in church that we actually just paid to run with five thousand dollars. And that very Sabbath, both of them they gave two five each. And sister brother came and said, "For both of us, and the following Sabbath, they gave the other five thousand dollars." They really supported God's cause. Let me hear say, amen. "Amen." Brother brother was an introvert, but often made solid points from Scripture when he was called upon. He was a model father, ensuring that all his children attended church, school, and as sound moral values were inculcated in them from an early age. And right now we have Jordy and Leron. They were in church up until yesterday. Sabbath so before we died, he was in church and he sat there, his last Sabbath here. And I recall he always asked me to do his tight envelope. And he asked one of them to do it on that Sabbath. And I was saying, why did he not ask me? Or no one would say, Elder, do it tiny little for me. But they were always, they were always in church, and now we have them. And their grandchildren also were in church. The, um, the other um, Bernards are in church. Amaya and her sister, they're all, also in church. Brother Bernard was engaged in farming. He was a farmer all his life. And so he, was, he did farming to ensure that his, the needs of his family, the basic needs of his family were, uh, were met. And so up until age 88, he was still going to the farm. And so I think he has left a legacy behind for all the lazy farmers and lazy people in the district. <laughs> you know that um, they need to work hard to make a living. He was always, always in his farm, always, always. But the Bernard was an encourager. He would encourage you. He would encourage um, us at all times. On some of mornings, when a man we would always sit on the road, come to church, I would pick them up and take them to church. And for a close to me, I would be at 2 p.m. You come to me and they would say to me, Hey, do you know, go home at night, you know. A man, do you live? You know, I'm not doing you know. I took her and go home. Always encouraging me. Always encouraging me. Always. And I know that others would testify that he, uh, he was also always encouraging them. His calm demeanor and quiet disposition, I hope, will be emulated by several persons or the young, young people in the community and also in the church. The community has lost a giant of a man in the name of um, Adolphus Bernard. The church, we have sadly missed him, but we are encouraged by the words of John in Revelation 14, verse 13, and I read, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works will follow them. May his soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine upon him. Praise the, Lord. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When time shall come yes. for my leaving, and I shall be proved then true. Don't spend your money on flowers. Just a rose. 
No matter how rough life was, none of his children or grandchildren were deprived of their basic needs. He was a people person and got along with everybody he was in contact with. He was welcoming and made light of every situation. He was able to give a joke to lift your spirit, even at his lowest. He gave the funniest comment. Once we made some juice for him, we asked him or we tasted it. His response was Moorish, <laughs> meaning that he wanted more. He had an old joke every time he met upon any child or one of his grandchildren. He would ask, who are you? Where are you near? They would laugh and tell him their names each time, knowing that he already knew who they were. Daylight was an impartial man. He treated everyone equally. He was a friend to both old and young, male or female. If Papa bucked him too, the whole community would run to him, true or false. Bless the Lord. Your name was not your own when it came to Papa. When he called, he called everybody's name and somebody's laughing at the front, right? One of his grandchildren. So he called everybody's name before landing on the person he intended to call. Bigger, Anne, Chase, Marva, Peter, Henry, Jeffrey, Vivian, Eric, Bev, come here. Papa had the best riddles and doppy stories but only told them on his terms. His terms at this time meant you had to pay him dues. When you made your payment, he would say, tomorrow he tell one of the story. <laughs> he was a keen storyteller at night. So you were bound to get an impact when he was finished. And what's the impact? You're free because it has to be a doppy story. Papa was a very strong man. The strongest man we knew, we knew. We don't know anybody stronger than the elite. He was a hardworking and devoted family man. He did everything to ensure the needs of his family were met beyond expectation. He was always on the farm and never comes home empty handed. And Miss P, not you Miss P, can attest to that Papa never come home empty handed, don't. And because of that, everybody would beg him on the road. If you met upon him and he forget, forgot who you were, he would never know, you would never know. You would have a full on conversation. Then when he's out of your presence, you would ask how that. <laughs> he was a doctor to us all. Whatever issue you had, you would he would find remedy. He was fully invested in his children to the point of assisting in delivering of one of his grandchildren. Wow, that's excellent. Papa was always on his farm. No matter how hard the rain fell, he was able to make a fire. His secret was to keep dry and bush under the cave, so he always had fuel or fire. The children and grandchildren were tasked with going to the farm early in the morning before school to get produce so Mama could take them to the market. The trips were tiring. But Papa ensured to sweeten the deal. When he reached the top of the hill, with the, when we reached the top of the hill with the first trip, you, we would hear Papa calling us by name and saying, Oh no, hurry up and come back. Me are was a nice piece of yam and make some sugar and water for you. Know. Papa was an excellent cook. He made the tightest dumpling, and I know when my uncle used to make tight dumpling, it seems as if your teeth do not drop out. So I can just imagine Papa's dumpling. When Papa was cooking, he made his own utensils out of wood. He would cook in what we call a three-foot pot. He would fill it with food, and everybody ate it their belly full. Mama took over cooking because she thought Papa cooked too much. Too much food all at once, but as the children, it was fun and they didn't complain because we would eat until we have food left for later. 
Papa did not drop the ball and discipline for any of his children. He was a good disciplinarian. The mannerism displayed by his children shows that his leather strap connected to its target. When we gave trouble and he was not home, Mama would say, wait till Stanley come. Lo and behold, when Stanley came, she was the same one rescuing us. Papa was a dedicated church man. He helped in any way that he could. And let me emphasize this. If there was a price for being the first person at church present, that would be Sister Bernard and Brother Bernard. And the church can attest to that. They were present for all crusades. Rain or shine, they didn't break the line. His favorite psalm was Psalm 34, which emphasizes how God shows up when he speak for his people during times of trouble. He developed a love for the psalm during a difficult period in his life. Papa was everything you needed him to be, a confidant, a friend, a listener, a doctor, a teacher, a comforter, a provider, and we could go on and on into the infinite beyond. Papa, you were loved and cherished. And I just want to share something. Um, I remember a few years ago, um, Elder Angela Brown, we, as the women's ministry coordinator, along with Sister Campbell, we, um, we spoke about going to the hotel to spend probably Mother's Day or just for the women to hang out. And I remember explicitly when Sister Bernard said, oh me, me never sleep with one woman yet. So me not go to a hotel to sleep with no woman. If my husband are standing now, go, me now go. And she said it with no explanation. That was just Sister Bernard. Just to show you that that's the relationship that they had. And when I look at it, I can just imagine. Have you ever seen Skellian without time? No. Nearly, not all the time, but most of the times, you would see Skellian if you go to the market, you say, sell me a powder Skellian. Or you say, sell me a bundle Skellian. But you will get a little time. That is how Sister Bernard and Brother Bernard lives. Skellian and the time. We can associate them with the Skellian and the time. Your story of Mr. Death will resonate with your children. Mr. Death passed the man's house one day while he was sitting on his veranda and told him he was coming for him on his way back. The man quickly called his gardener, gave him some of his clothes, and told him to go sit on the veranda. In turn, he went into the garden as the gardener. When Mr. Death was passing, he pointed up to the veranda and said, See him there, sir? Mr. Death said, Well, since you're there so close, it makes sense we take you. The moral of the story, we can never hide from death. When it is your time to leave this earth, it will happen. When a great man falls, another one rises. The show of this great man will be extremely hard to fail. Papa, you have left, left us an impeccable example to follow. Your dedication to your family and your community is a cut above the rest. There are special people in our lives who never, who, who never leaves us, even after they are gone. We do not remember days, we remember memories. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. And I want everybody to smile at this time. God bless you. The best. And the most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt from the heart. Sleep on, must be light. Until in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. God bless you. We have heard it, we have heard all about Mass Daylight, we move on. Now in 
celebrating the life of Brother Bernard with us this afternoon. We have some special persons. We have Councillor Wayne Smith. Raise your hands, Councillor. Want to welcome you to Litchfield again. He's always coming here. He's always here, you know. So give me a special welcome. Also, I have we have on my right here, I have Mr. Paul Patmore, CEO of Patmore's Funeral Home. Not many persons might know that Paul Patmore and myself live in the same house for a number of years. You know, we didn't know that. No oh, man, you know that now. Okay, so I want to welcome you, uh, Paul, Mr. Patmore, to um, the service here this afternoon. Now we continue. Any other distinguished person in the audience? Please welcome yourself. Let me see your hands up. Any other distinguished person? I've left out. Okay, we move on. I now invite us to do the second set of tributes. We have three minutes for our tribute, please. Three minutes. If you are worth with time. Oh, sorry. Second list not going. Oh, I'm sorry. Second list not going yet. Okay. Could you come, um, Eric Bernard and those for the second list? Could you come, please? Followed by the tributes, we have Vera, Vera Rita Fairclough on behalf of Pauline Erland, who is a sister, Litchfield SA Women's Ministry, Roshane Bigby, grandson, and Denise Hughes, a family friend. So after the lesson, we'll be having those tributes. Thank you. Church. The scripture reading will be taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 to 58. I'll be reading in your hearing. Right. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood can inherit the kingdom of God, neither God. Corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and in and we shall be changed. For the corrupted corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when the corruptible yeah, shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be what to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory, O death, which is thy stinging. The stinging of death is seen and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which is given, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always unbounding in the work of the Lord, for us most, as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is the scripture of the Lord. Loving brother, 
giving of his best was always his plan. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart. That was definitely his heart. He was faithful to the creator. So he's now resting in the arms of his maker. Always showing respect with a quiet demeanor. An outstanding citizen in all his endeavor. Thank you, Lord, for giving him to us. He was special and real and never made a fuss. I love you forever, my brother. Standing, God, angels forever. I will miss your positive talk and your smile. Whenever we cross paths, pardon me, I will miss your positive talk whenever we cross each other's part. You are one of a kind. You will always be on my mind. You left a legacy of excellence. You are my hero in every sense. You amplify goodness and honesty. In you there is no travesty. You are the act home of grace. It's always seen in your face. Goodbye, my brother. Until we meet again, this is certainly not the end. I sure miss you, but heaven sweeter with you there. Rest in peace, my brother. Take your rest in God's eternal home. We miss you, but Jesus loves you best. <laughs> Shall we praise the Lord. Lift your hands and worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Bless the Lord. I want to say on behalf of the Women's Ministries Department of Litchfield Seventh Day Adventist Church to Sister Bernard's and family, don't cry as if there's no hope because there's hope in King Jesus. He promised that he will never leave you nor forsake you. I want to encourage you that his grace is sufficient in every trials you face. Praise the Lord. As I sing this song, I hope it will cheer you up. Some days it seems like all that I try is in vain. In spite of my efforts, all I produce is more strength. In doubts and delusions, all of my heart soon erases. His grace is sufficient for every trial. Yeah. 
Roche in here? Uh, yes. Your turn. <laughs> Uh, good evening, church. I'll be doing a poem. You left this world so quickly, we still wonder why. For the saddest part of all, you never said goodbye. You left, you left us so many memories. To us, you were so dear. No matter when we needed you, you were always so near. You gave, you gave us gifts, both big and small. But most of all, you gave us love, the greatest gift of all. Yes. Okay, that was his tribute. I will invite uh, Mr. and Mrs. Dennis, Miss Dennis Hughes to do her tribute. And while she sings, there will be a floral tribute by the family. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. God is good. Um, during this process, we ask that you take your groan to God and He will comfort you.
pay all our respect to a wonderful gentleman. Actually, I just want to encourage the family today. It's a sad time in your life. Because when you have lost someone who was this precious to the family, I sure that there are times you will cry. But I just want to encourage you today that God is still standing by. And in spite of the sadness, you can take faith. You can take hope in the fact that he lived a good life. I have never gotten the chance to interact with him much, but even seeing him on the street, you could see that this man was a special person. He was always going about his business looking so healthy and strong. But the time has come when his makeup requests him, and he must go to his makeup. I want you all to continue to be good to each other. Continue to show love and respect to your brothers, to your sisters. We're living in times where we wonder why. We have seen so many things happening around us. We have seen babies being killed, burnt, women being killed. And we tend to wonder what is happening. But today, let us play our role by being loving, being kind, being affectionate to each other. And if we do that, I sure at the end of the day, we will say that we have played our role and we have played it well. God bless you. I love you all. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise him another time. Praise the Lord. For sure, I know there's only one person you cannot praise the Lord, and it's Brother Burnham. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're here on such a sad occasion, but we know tears are long range. God understand if you also cry, do so. Let's praise the Lord. Yes, I'm a part of the men ministry. I'm the men ministry leader. And a part of the men ministry, I I can't go back and to say because I only have three minutes. If I did have the time, I would have here where Brother Bernard had come from. But time is limited. But I just want to show you a short because incident between Brother Bernard and Brother Howard. On um, the Sabbath before Brother Bernard passed away, we were leaving from church to go home, but I reached by the orderly. I would say by Officer Colin. When I reached at the gate, I um, passed them there, my sister Bernard. So I started to hurry because it was about to rain. When I reached, I bought up my cigarette the car, please, and I wash the car. I hear, Brother Howard, I tell him, Sir Joe, fine man, you leave your foot when you don't call me an idiot. Brother Howard, you leave your foot. I don't realize, so I turn right back. He's sorry enough to call me no idiot. I turn right back. When I reach him, he said, Brother, how are you going to go and get back your foot? <laughs> so, Brother Bernard was a such type person. A very, I could tell you lots of things were coming from book. I'm limited. But at this time, in my ministry, I would call on one of my second, I'm not such a good singer. I called on my second that he could give a song in tribute because we are all on the men ministry team. Then I would say that before you come, say to the family, Brother Bernard, and leave a legacy. A legacy. I want all of the family to take a grip and hold on because from Brother Bernard, accept Christ. As Sister Brown would say, when you're missing a church, you must be sick. And he's always early. I'm a man on time by 8 o'clock. And the time I open the church is Brother Bernard and Sister Bernard. So I said, Brother Bernard, may your soul rest in peace. Light perfection shine upon you as the main ministry would sing for us. Amen. Amen. 
You know, I don't like funerals though, because I find myself being crying for some people that I don't know. But um, brother, brother Bernard, oh my God, I would beat myself if I am not a brother Bernard's funeral today. Yeah, I love that man. Yes. And I must say to the family that this is a little storm. But as you know that there is a God who you can put all your cares upon. I know you can ride out your storm. Amen? Amen. You've been in the storm. It seemed like forever.
publicly with our friend and church sister, Vivian and her family, is our nice Sabbath school class. Rashid, Rashid is a member of our Pathfinder Club, Yvette Pathfinder Club, a champion Pathfinder, right Rashid? Right. All right, so just want to express condolences on behalf of our church pastor, Pastor Michael Lewis, and the Board of Elders, just to express our condolences to the Bernard's family, specifically to Vivian and her family, her immediate family, who are close to us there at Hagi Park. You would have seen the support for us to journey all this way, the kind of bonding and the relationship that we share. And I did mention that Vivian is a member of my Sabbath school class, right? Um, just want to say to the family, um, I've sat and I've listened, and we would have heard so much about Mr. Bernard. I've never met him, um, but just listening, to the different persons talking, it sounds as if you would have known him for a long time. 1935 to September, July 31st, 1935 to September 20, 2023 is a mighty long time. And that's, that is dash, right? You know you're right, I you put the dash in the middle. Now, he would have lived his dash. He would have lived his dash. His dash came to an end on September 20. We don't know when our dash will end. So I say to us, not just the family members, all of us here present, be careful how we live our dash. Because it can be any minute now, your dash will end. How will you fear with your Lord? Thank you and condolences again to the Litchfield Church family as well. Okay, we, I have a co-chairperson with me this afternoon, a person of Pastor Aldan Fuller, and that is time you will take over, Pastor Fuller. Amen. Thank you, Elder Brown. Let me say, afternoon, everyone. Adolphus Bernard was a cheerful giver. One who readily gave to whatever worthy cause he was required to make his contribution to. At this time, we'll be asking you to dig deep in your pockets and your purses. And if needs be, you can even make transfers from your account. That's the age we have come to live in. Each Seventh-day Adventist church operates what we call a community services department. That means whether you are a member or not, as long as you are a member of the community and whatever needs you may have, the church will seek to alleviate some of those needs. If you should ask Councillor Palmer, Councillor Summit, he will tell you it takes cash to care. If you read the Bible, the Bible will tell you that money answereth all. So we are going to ask you to give off your money, give off that which God has blessed you with, so that this church may be able to reach out its hand to the community when the time comes. At this time we'll be collecting an offering in aid of the community service department and I'm going to ask Songbird Sams to come and to help us to 
that will cheer us by the way. Because even though Brother Bernard has gone before us, believe it or not, in a little while we be going home.
we will have the eulogy and it will be done by Minister Norma Smith, sister, along with Mrs. Ivory Peters, stepsister. At this time, the eulogy. Praise the Lord again, everybody. Praise the Lord. 
eulogy for the life of the late Clifton Adolphus Bernard. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. And Job added to that because he said, man that is born of a woman hath but a few days to live. Clifton Adolphus Bernard, affectionately called Daylight, Brother Stanley, Old Stan, and Stanley, was born to parents Rothland L.U. Bernard and Ina Beckford on July 13, 1935, in the district of Woodgrove in Toulon. He was the first of several children, and as such, was tasked with the responsibility of taking care of his younger siblings at an early age. By the way, you can see me? while his parents toiled relentlessly to make ends meet. Clifton learned the art of farming from his parents. He toiled with them in the field and quickly learned the techniques of planting and harvesting. Soon he was able to financially assist his parents with household responsibilities. He grew to be a very strong and industrious young man. He later ventured out on his own. He worked as a day worker with various persons stretching across the communities of all sides to learners. These experiences added to the skill set that he had already acquired from his parents. When a man finds a good woman, he realizes that true love isn't about finding someone who completes him, but someone who inspires him to become a better version of himself. Clifton soon realized that he could not live alone, but although he had found love of his immediate family, he needed and he desired a family of his own. He met Rebecca in the district of Waterbit in the late 1950s, while he was working as while she was working as a domestic helper, Clifton was a sharp shooter. He had a way with words. We surmise he used one of his jokes to riddle or riddle to sweep Rebecca off her feet. Because short, shortly after they met and and on invigorating fire kindled between them. In short order, Rebecca moved back to her original hometown of Woodrow. She wanted to be closer to her beloved Clifton because it was his hometown too. They moved in together and started their family. The union produced 11 children, five handsome young men, and six beautiful ladies, two of which are now deceased, and could those who are here stand and let the church see? Yes, strong, bouncing, and healthy looking people. Having a family pushed him to work harder to provide for the needs of his wife and children. He was soon able to transition from working for other farmers to having his own farm. Rebecca was now able to assist him 
she would visit the farm with him and aid with taking the produce to the market. Life continued progressing well, but something was missing. In the year 1985, when a Seventh-day Adventist bad worker visited their home and studied with them, they immediately realized that the cord of the three strand is not quickly broken, according to Ecclesiastes 4 and verse 12. That very year, they joined hands and heart in holy matrimony and were baptized. Unfortunately, sin had its grip and kicked and faltered along the way. But we praise God that in his words, he declares, blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered, and the Lord will never count it against them. Clifton was rebaptized in 2000 and never looked back again. He was a devoted Christian man. He and Rebecca were like two peas in a pod when he came to church. You never saw one without the other. Clifton was not a sickly man. However, he treated many wounds. He often came from the farm with a bruise here and a bruise there, a cut here and a cut there, a slit across the wrist with switch, with severed vein, and yet, when he left home, he doctored them all. In July 2015, Clifton gave us a scare when he fell at his farm, fractured his rib, and was admitted to the hospital for one week. Under the circumstances, we thought we would have lost him, but God added an additional eight wonderful years. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. On September 11, 2023, Clifton fell ill again while planting corns at board. He was taken to the Persecutor Hospital where he was admitted. He was released from the hospital on Wednesday, September 13, 2023. Exactly one week after he was released, on September 20, 2023, Clifton was called home. He heard the sound, come home, my child, and he answered at approximately 7.30 a.m., surrounded by several loved ones, including the love of his life, Rebecca. He leaves to mourn nine children. I see ten in bracket, but nine in words. Twenty-two grandchildren, nine grand great grandchildren, five sisters, three brothers, a host of nieces, nephews, other relatives, and his church family. We also take comfort in knowing that you lived a life, a full one, one that was filled with joy and a jovial one as you heard um, it was said before. You lived for God as well as you lived for men. You have been a superb example of what a real man should be. Remember that being a real man is not, does not consist of riches. Nothing breaks our heart more than having a home that no longer has you in it. But we are grateful for the time we shared together. You brought us so much joy and happiness and we will never ever forget you. Your memories will still live in our hearts. We praise God that his promises are ever sure and that we look forward for the day when God shall wipe all tears from our eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Rest well, Papa. I am free from the care that I carry from the dawn until life I set free. Oh, when I met Jesus, He made you complete, and He forgot the foolish.
And uh, if I call names of everybody, you're going to have to stay here longer than I intend. So everybody that is here is good to see you. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Brother Bernard was a man of God. And I say that without reservation. Brother Bernard was a man of God. He, he was very committed, very supportive. Brother Bernard and his wife were, as one person said, peas in a pot. Skellion and thyme. Peanut butter and jelly, and the list goes on. Wherever you saw one, you're bound to see the other. Excepting Brother Bernard is coming from his farm. But they're always together. And it, it shows the quality of their relationship. And I think they have set an example for many to follow. Amen? Amen. And their children. He was very supportive, supportive of us, as I've said. You will always see him at night meetings. When it comes to family life week or series, whatever it was, he would be here. And he'd be here early too. And I remember when he passed, I went to visit him before he passed, probably the Monday and he passed on Wednesday. Uh, but I remember when he passed, someone said that they looked back at, someone said that he was always present at crusade. And I went on YouTube and looked at one of the sermons, just randomly chose one of the sermons, and um, I saw Brother Bernard seated in the congregation. You can imagine how joyful I felt when I saw that. There he was beside his wife, at crusade at the age of 88. Very committed, very dedicated, a man of God, and he will be missed. His legacy lives on in his children and in those that he would have impacted. This afternoon, I want to share with you on the caption Set your house in order. Set your house in order. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be in your courts today. We acknowledge your sovereignty. We acknowledge that you are the God who gives life and who sustains life. And even when life is taken away, you give comfort to those who mourn the loss of a life. We are gathered here today, God, because we are giving thanks for the life of Brother Bernard. A life well lived. A life that would have been lived in service for you and in service for humanity. We thank you, God, for the legacy that he would have left behind in the form of his children and all those that he would have impacted here on earth in his lifetime. And we pray, gracious God, that even as we continue to live in this life, that the examples that you would have set will impact us to have an impact on others too. We pray, gracious God, that even now, as we are about to hear a word from you, your servant puts himself into your hands, asking that you will fill me afresh with the Spirit of God, so that your words will indeed be clarified. Your children that are awaiting a word from you will be edified, and Jesus, your Son, will indeed be magnified. Have your own unlimited way today. Put self out of the way and let no distractions come because you are the God of all. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Speak now, I pray, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen. Amen. Set your house in order. I read from, for you from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 38. I'm going to read just a few verses. The Bible says, In those days Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said, Thus saith the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord, and said, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Verse 4. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, Go and tell Hezekiah, Thus says the God of David your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, surely I will add to your days fifteen years. Set your house in your heart. The book of Isaiah gives us the story of a king called Hezekiah.
King Hezekiah, unlike many of the kings back then, sister Sam's, was a good king. Many of the kings back then did evil in the sight of God, and as you read their story, you realize that these men were far from what God intended for them to do. But Hezekiah, if there was one king who did good, Pastor Fuller, that was Hezekiah. Hezekiah feared the Lord, and he walked in his integrity all the days of his life. If Hezekiah was here today, Bernard's family, Hezekiah would have been one of the best leaders of the nation. If Hezekiah was here today, he would have helped others along their way. If Hezekiah was here today, he would have strengthened the weak and built up the fallen. Hezekiah would have turned the entire nation back to God and point men and women to walk in the right way. So the Bible says that Hezekiah was a good king. I want to pause here, Sister Sam, and suggest that we're living at a time when we need good men and women in Jamaica that we love. We are living at a time when we need men and women to choose to do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. In an age where people do so much evil and hurt each other, in an age where men and women are living as they please, we need individuals to choose to live right. That is why I'm happy for the life of Brother Bernard. Because the man lived right. Nobody came up to say he was a bigot. Or he was keeping money so he did evil. He tried as best as possible to live right. Jamaica needs men and women pastor full up who will choose to live right. We have too many individuals doing evil. This morning I, as I came out early, I overheard two neighbors talking about an incident that happened last night right behind our community there. We're living at a dangerous time. We need people who will live right. In an age where kings did evil, the Bible says that Hezekiah did that which was good. So Hezekiah was a good king. But even though Hezekiah did good, listen to this now. Hezekiah, even though he did the right thing, even though the Bible says he upheld the poor, and strengthen the nation. The Bible also says that Hezekiah was sick and this sickness was unto death. No doubt Hezekiah would have tried the best doctors. No doubt he would have tried the best counselors. No doubt he would have tried the best physicians. No doubt he tried the best remedies. But Hezekiah could not find anything to help him to get better. I'm not sure there's anybody seated here this afternoon who understands what Hezekiah would have gone through. Maybe you're seated here and you've tried and exhausted all other means possible to try and find a solution for the broken conditions of life. But the more you try, the more you realize that you keep on failing. It simply means, beloved friends, that there comes a point in life when we recognize that we cannot live life on our own and we're going to need the help of God. One person says you're going to need God's bosom to be your pillow when rough time comes. You're going to need God's hand to carry you over when it is time for you to move on. We are going to need God's hand in those times and I suggest that we find God now. When those times come, we don't have to worry. Hezekiah was a good man, but he was sick and he was sick unto death. In fact, his suspicion of dying was confirmed one day when the prophet Isaiah, the man of God, came to him with a message. Isaiah turned to the king and said, O king, thus says the Lord God. When God says something, he said, you know, you have to, when God says something, you have to take him seriously. You know, because God don't make joke and God don't play. One of the reasons, sister, wrong, why God don't make joke is that anything God says has to come to pass. When I was going to high school, the boys used to have a little thing, you know, where they would turn to you and say, you know, scare you, jump off your body. And you know, out of the, the, the quick they jump off, they say, they turn around to keep their hands there for sure. Anybody know that pastor they're talking about? You no, know, man, they say, jump off, and turn around to the keep their fall off for sure. Not true. Can you imagine if God ever says something like that? God said, look boy, you jump off your body. Immediately it would happen. So God, when he speaks, does not mean the words and does instead tell jokes. Because whatever God says has become the past. Isaiah says, God says the Lord God, set your house in order because you shall die and not live. You see, 
beloved friends, even though this man would have done so much good deed, even though he was a good king, even though he did the right things in the sight of God, Ezekiel still had an appointment with death. And you ask the question, Pastor Watson, how could this man have done the right things, said the right things, lived the right way, walked right before God, but the man was sick and sick unto death? I hear him to tell you the answer about the marriage. The answer is that he was human and he was simply infected by a greater disease unto death. There's a disease, beloved friends, that affects everyone, both the good and the bad, both the ugly and the pretty, both the rich and the poor. Wherever you are, you can be affected and are affected by this disease that I talk about. This disease affected not only as a child of the king. But it affects you and affects me today because we are human beings. This infectious disease is worse than COVID-19. It is worse than HIV AIDS. It is worse than Ebola. And it is certainly worse than dengue. This infectious disease is called sin. S-I-N-C. Sin, beloved friends, is a disease that causes you and I to have an appointment with death. The Bible says in Romans 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and have what? Come short of the glory of God. In fact, David says, I was born in, and in iniquity I was shaken. The Bible says, beloved friends, that because every man is a born sinner, all of us has an appointment with death. The Bible tells us, beloved friends, that all of us one day will come down to kiss a dying pillow. And that is why it means for us today, we have to consider how we live, what we do, what we say, because at the end of life, we will have to give an account to God. The Bible says that all of us have this appointment because we are all sinners, and it tells us that the wages of sin is death. When death comes knocking, it does not look at the rich people and pass them by. As you heard in the story, the, the, the owner thought he could trick the guard to become the one to, to die. But he did not know that when death comes, living, death is not going to pass any one person. Whomever it comes is going to take. But there is an assurance in the word of God that if death comes and you're on the right side, praise God, you shall live again. I praise God that Brother Bernard knew about the call of heaven, for he assures him that when he comes the second time, the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ will rise first. And I pray that Brother Bernard is going to be a part of your great number. When death comes, it doesn't pass anybody. It takes who he comes for because death respects no one. As human beings, Sister Bernard, we're still dropping with this concept of death. And it breaks our hearts when a loved one dies because it is painful. Oh, how the tears run down your cheeks when you realize that someone that you love will not be placed in a box six feet beneath. Beloved friends, I want to assure you today, however, that amidst the distress of life, we do not have to mourn as those who have no hope, because we are told that one day, God will put an end to death and carry you and carry my hope. So Isaiah came to the king and said, since you are going to die, then there is something for you to do. You must set your house in order. Can I tell you this evening, beloved friends, that this is the same message God sends to us. See that all of us like bread on a shelf has an expiration date. God is saying, before you die, set your house in order. Set your life in a way that when you die, you know that you're saved in this, on the side of Christ. So that when it comes the second time, heaven will be your home. So you ask me, Pastor, before I close. How can we set our house in order? What are some of the practical things we can do? Here are four things you can do to set your house in order. Number one, strive to live a good life. What did I say? Strive to live a good life. In a world where there is so much evil and wickedness, seek to live the best way possible to inspire others and to impact their lives. Seek to be honest. Seek to be true. Seek to be loving in spite of others who don't love you. Seek to be right and seek to please God because anything outside of this makes your life vanity. 
When everyone is doing wrong, strive to do that which is good. When everyone else is breaking the law, strive to keep the law. When everyone else is living without respect for God, strive to honor the God of heaven. Because if you live your life in a good way, you will please God and more so you will impact others. Amen. Try to fix broken relationships that you have before death comes. Sometimes people die and they, you know, they never say it right before they die. I, 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 I possibly hope that that was not the case of Father Bernard. He was such a kind and loving gentleman. I, I, I shan't believe that he would have passed off without setting things right. Are we together? But there are so many people in life who they do not set things straight in their life. And sometimes they go down to the grave with malice in their hearts. And hatred in their heart. And bad in their heart. And it runs their soul. And they die the same way. Before you die, you need to set yourself straight. So when you die, if there's nothing that anybody can say bad about you, set it straight. Number one, live a good life. Number two, here we go. Number two is to set your family straight. There have been many men and women who die and leave their families in disarray. So many times, the family is left in a position where they are at feud with each other. Some people are in malice and others are hurt over what one person said and what one person did. Others are simply disinterested in the affairs of the family. There are two men and women. When they die, they leave their families in this state. Disarray and shambles. Praise God that Brother Bernard's family can sit here together in the same color. And can come and say something positive about the man. How we together? Family challenges will always come. But before you die, you must try to fix these families. And set your family straight before you go out together. This is a part of setting your house in order. Set them straight. I know the difference is we always die because when we die, we cannot set them straight again. The third thing we must do to set our houses in order to settle this place on our strength of this tree. Listen to this practical counsel. There are so many men and women who, when they die, they leave their families in debt after they die. I, I heard the story of a young boy who was about to kill himself. And his mother got rid of it and he was going to kill himself. And the man broke up and the man said, Come and go. And the boy jumped on the phone. And listening to hear his mother say, Son, don't kill yourself. Why would you do something like that? We love you. The man is saying, I'm killing yourself because I don't have no money to bury you. <laughs> are we together? There are some individuals who, when they die, they leave their families in death as they die. Sorry. Sometimes when people die, they leave their families in more dead than when they were alive. They leave large sums of dead and pain, or they die because of pain and can't bury them. Others die losing assets, but they did not declare who should get the assets, and then their family sometimes is in great arguing about the dead Are we together? So let that not be your case as you go through life. Try to set things straight where your responsibility is concerned. One of the worst things to have, to have is a family buried a dead and also fighting over land and house and car and the dead list. Not a good thing, counselor. Not a good thing at all. So when you are alive, do something that will help them to know when I die, this belongs to my wife. When I die, this belongs to my son. When I die, this belongs to him or her. So that when the death comes, there's no death left to argue over. I praise God for the life of Brother Bernard. Say amen. amen. So we must set our debts in order because when we die, we cannot change them. The final point before I take my seat this afternoon. The final thing we need to do by the bar before we pass off to set our houses in order is to seek the Lord. Amen. There are many, many women who die. Some of them who lived a good life, Pastor Fuller. Some of them who have so set their family matters straight. Some of them who set their debts, but they still did not set their houses in order because they without the Lord. Can I tell you that the saddest life that is lived on earth is a life that is lived without Jesus 
Christ. You can live the most peaceful life. You can live the most helpful life. You can live the most caring life. You can be the best father, the best mother, the best friend, the best family member. But if you don't have God, your life was in vain. Your life was not complete. And I'm thankful for the life of Brother Bernard. Last night as I visited the family, I went to see his wife. And one of the things she said amongst other things, Pastor, it hurt me. It hurt me in God. But Pastor, it would hurt me more if the man ever accepted Jesus. In other words, she said, I'm comforted that the man accepted Jesus before he died. His life was not in vain. His life was not incomplete. He made Jesus his best friend. There's so many people are seated here today who have not yet made Jesus your best friend. This is an opportunity and a message for you to remember if you die and you're not on the side of Christ, it is final. There's no repentance in the grave. But if you make it right now, then when Jesus comes, the place is assured for you. I want to let you know, beloved friends, you must understand that it's not your good works that will save you at the end. It is not how many people you have helped that will save you at the end. It is not how many times you gave to the poor that will save you at the end. It is not even how you treat your family that will save you. These things are to be done, but by them says they cannot save you. The only thing that can save you, my friends, is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus says that in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good courage because they have overcome the world. And you know, the Bible goes on to tell us other places where Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. And John 3 verse 26 says that without the Son, the wrath of God abides upon us. John 3 16 tells us that Jesus was the gift given to save us. All the good things you can do in this world cannot save you except you put Jesus first. So one songwriter says, before you die, see the Lord. Amen. As I close, Hezekiah was a good man. He did that which was right in the sight of God, but he was still going to die. And so the right thing for him to have done was to see God. The Bible says that after Isaiah left, the king turned to the wall, and in his quiet time, I, Hezekiah cried out to God. When Hezekiah saw the Lord, the Bible says that God heard his cry for him and his life was extended. Someone here today needs to see the Lord before it's too late. Today, Jesus is standing by as a loving Savior to grant pardon and to save you from the sinful world. Notice that when Hezekiah cried out to God, his life was extended for people. If you today cry out to God in your state, you know yourselves. Pastor, I don't know, no, no, I don't know most of you. But you know yourselves. If you cry out to God in this time of distress, in this time of trouble all around, in this time when there are worries and wars in our world, in this time when men are becoming women and women are becoming men, in this time when babies are victims and innocent people lose their lives for things they did not do, if you cry out to God in this time of distress, turn your face to the wall and reach out to God. And the Bible shows us that like Ezekiel, he will extend our lives. Today, beloved friends, I bring a message of comfort, but I also bring a message of hope. Before you pass off into the chilly hands of death, before the casket closes upon you, before the, the grave is covered down and that's it for now, before all of that comes, put your life in the hands of Jesus. You are assured that comes what me, you will indeed have a place in this kingdom. Today, before you die, set your house Amen. Amen. Praise, the Praise the Lord. We have been warned. Thank you for passing for that message and a timely message. I'm going to be asking that the driver of the vehicle 48, let's play 4848 KJ. You are blocking Pastor Fuller's um, entrance to his house and somebody wants to get out. 4848 KJ.
Could you help us out, please? Now, at this time, we'll be having prayer for the family. You know that um, the days ahead are going to be very difficult for the family members. Yes. Very difficult days. Everybody's gone, it's um, this evening, and the family members are going to have left and they will scattered all over the place. They are going to be very lonely. They need a friend, a friend who's closer than a brother. And that friend is Jesus Christ. What do you say? Amen. So as the congregation stand and the family members remain seated, we are going to be singing, His voice makes a difference. When He speaks, He relieves my troubled mind. It's the only voice I hear that makes a difference. And I follow one day at a time. As Pastor Alvin Fuller, we pray with the help of the family. to you, you who cannot lie has promised 
that when you come again, though they may die like Clifton, you have the power to bring them back and to reunite them with those of their brothers and sisters who have been faithful as well. Take them through this time, we pray. Work through the human instruments of friends and loved ones to sit with them, to talk with them, and if necessarily, to cry with them. Lord. Grant unto us your peace, we pray, now and forevermore. May your name be glorified. May the life of Brother Bernard be of such impact that according to your will, when he shall rise on resurrection morning and look around, he will see his wife and he will see a host of his family members. And may all of us stand on the sea of glass and hear you say, well done, entering and through the gate and into the city. To this end we look forward, to this end we pray, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Please remain standing. As I look around, I glimpse um, Justice Laverne Pierre and also a committee member in the audience. We want to thank you for grace as we present um, Justice. Now, here are the um, instructions. During the singing of the first stanza of the recessional hymn on your program, there's a land that is fairer than day. You sing of the first verse, the Paul Bears will take your, put your position. And the, the um, platform part will be leaving first, followed by the Paul Bears at the outside. Then we have the choir, the family members, then we have um, friends and well wishers as we go to the cemetery, um, which is just um, the church cemetery. Please be as orderly as you have been, and thank you for your cooperation. Let us understand as we sing the recession of him, there is a land that is fairer than day.
Undertakers to open. Are you finished? Are you finished? I'm gonna ask you to open the casket for those who want to have their final views. Some person may want to take pictures and videos, and we're not going to post for until Sister Bernard is here to take her final view. She's so precious. So you can take your views. All those who are out there, you can come and look now because when it goes down, we will not open it again. So if you need to see for the final time, please come at this point and look. Take your pictures, your videos, because when we are closed, we cannot open again. Thank you so much. And the rain is on its way, so let's do it quickly. Take your notes, beloved friends. Take your videos. We're going to close soon. I suppose that I'm going to take on a move. 
shall be changed and made like unto his glorious body according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself therefore as we commonly say ashes to ashes dust to dust we will now ask pastor fuller to pray for us at this time let us bow our heads heavenly father once again we come to your throne room we ask that you may mark the spot of our dear brother, your son. And we pray according to your will that when the first trumpet shall sound, that he shall rise to meet you in newness of life. Grant us your peace now and forevermore. Amen. 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 We now ask the undertakers to do their work as the sun service persons to lead us out in some forces. One more look at you, brother. Oh, the last day. Oh, the last day. I'm not 
family uh, expresses their gratitude to you. I realize you're members from the Hagley Park Church here and um, I think they are leaving but it's good to see you guys and we pray that you'll have safe passage back home. You know that their purse from overseas and purses from other places. It's good to have had you to support and of course the church members and the community members. May God bless you for your work, the text, the cause, the Whatever you would have done to support the family, may he bless you and may he keep us safe as we leave here from each other. Remember, there's coming a great day, a resurrection morning, when all of those who fall, fell asleep in Christ will be awakened and will be able to go home with him when he comes a second time. May we remain faithful to him until that time comes. Now we're going to have the closing prayer by Elder Angela Brown as we seek to leave from this spot of prayer. Father, we thank you for allowing us to lay to rest the remains of our dear brother, Brother Bernard, that for his life and the country to come, and yet may he spend time in his word and his word in general. We thank you for his life. We pray that he will continue to make his coming as a way. Leaves and give him his for them, but he will continue to guide them, to provide for them, to keep them. And Lord, Lord, in moments when they feel lonely, they realize that you are the friend of Jesus. You just care. Oh, yes, you care. You care for them. You protect them. You provide for them. Give them a special way. And pray for Sister Bernard in a special way, oh God, the widow. But she to guide her thoughts, her mind, but she to reflect what is the potential that they have had together. And you to bless them in a special way. Give us love and mercy, we pray. Amen. 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 Everybody safe our uh, troubles as you do. The repast is going to be within. The repast is going to be at the church, so you can go there before you are going to go. No, you can't go there. Now on.
go to my graveside already. Aminium, aminium, mad. Thank you. 